Good evening, Grizzlies. Welcome back to campus and the Franklin Newscast. We hope you all had a good spring break. Thank you for joining us. I'm Zach Roberts. And I'm Vinny Patterson. Sit tight, enjoy our intro, and we'll be right back. Schools are always struggling with figuring out how they can prevent bullying, but it is harder to punish the bully when they do it anonymously. After multiple reported incidents on an app called Yik Yak, Franklin College banned the app from their network. Reporter Rias Moore sat down with Dean of Students Andrew Jones to talk about the ban. In recent weeks, an anonymous messaging app by the name of Yik Yak has been causing disturbance in the Franklin College community. Dean Jones tells us how it came to his notice. Um, folks saying there was some problematic things happening on other campuses, um, and not soon after that, I heard um, from some staff members on our campus saying, hey, has anyone seen what's going on on Yik Yak? Are you concerned about um, some of the, the comments that are being posted there? Not too long after that is when I sent the message to, to campus about Yik Yak being disallowed on our servers. Since sending the email to everyone on campus, there have still been messages posted on the app while not being on the Franklin College server. There's lots of negativity and what I would consider bullying um, that takes place on the application. I just don't think there's a place for it in a college community like this. I would tell people to, to think, think critically about what they're going to post, what they're hoping to accomplish. Um, if they'd be proud to have someone know that their name was attached to that comment, um, before they, they go ahead and put something out there. For the Franklin College Newscast, I'm Ryas Moore. After a story like that, it's important to remember that technology can also be used for good. Franklin College hosted a digi digital fluency event to inform students and staff on how to possibly use their liberal arts degrees in the world of tech. On April 7th, Franklin College hosted David Gerbitz, a chief people officer for Curie, to talk at a convocation discussing digital fluency. All right, how many of you are here under duress tonight? <laughs> I mean, I think the main point of tonight was that digital fluency is really about opportunity, and I wanted this college, this population, to understand that there is a place for them in these digital careers. Digital fluency is defined as the ability to leverage technology to create new knowledge, new challenges, and new problems, and to complement these things with critical thinking, complex problem solving, and social intelligence. Gerbitz says it is now more important than ever to become digitally fluent because of the ever-increasing use of technology in all fields. Every industry is getting disrupted by tech and they have to care about software and data because that's what's driving the business. And so you kind of have, don't have a choice. Like this is where the world is going. And the good news is there's a talent scarcity issue. There's a lot of jobs out there and these are wonderful places for careers. And so a student that has liberal arts capability married with some technical aptitude, technical curiosity, a digital mindset goes very, very far. Uh, in their interviews and in their ability to place themselves into to early jobs. Andrew Rosner, Director of Digital Fluency at Franklin College, reminds students that they have to take advantage of the resources present at Franklin as digital fluency is being pushed more and more. Something that David said uh, last night um, that really hit home for me, and as I think back to uh, when I was in school, is a, a, a lot of your success is going to be dependent on you, right? You, you, the student, um, need to take that responsibility and, and take advantage of the resources that you have here uh, at, at your disposal. For the Franklin Newscast, I'm Zane Spangler. All right, thanks everybody. Speaking of career changes, the men's soccer team just hired their new head coach. Reporter Sam Brunsman introduces us to the new coach and takes a deeper look into the hire. After a strong 2021 season, the Franklin College men's soccer program found themselves trending in the right direction. With the surprise departure of former head coach Cody Grauman, the men's soccer team was in search for their new leader. 
On February 21st, Franklin College announced Josh Galvin as the new head coach of the men's soccer program. Galvin, who played four years and coached as an assistant at Luther College in Decorah, Iowa, has the experience needed for the job. When Galvin saw the head coaching position open, he couldn't help but take it. My goal has always been to be a head coach, right? So I kind of got to a point in my career where I was looking to take that next step and uh, I was kind of looking around and saw, saw Franklin and applied for the job and was able to come here and it kind of reminded me a lot of where I went to school and where I have been coaching in the past. So I think it was a good fit. Galvin started his coaching career at Franklin last week with two separate practices with more to come in the following weeks. Today, I'm here at Grizz Park where the men's soccer team began their spring practices last week. They had a combination of fitness tests and regular practices in preparation for the fall season. Last year, the Grizzlies returned to the conference tournament for the first time since 2014 and have high intentions of returning this year. The men's soccer program is returning seven out of the 11 starters from last season with hopes of a conference championship under their new head coach. For the Franklin Newscast, I am Sam Brunswick. Grand Prix isn't the only race you should be looking forward to. The annual Indy 500 is coming up fast and Franklin College will be represented at the race by its own princess. Buckle your seatbelts, check those mirrors, and put the foot on the gas, because Franklin College's very own Lexi Giddens is living life in the fast lane. She will be representing Franklin College this May as a princess for the greatest spectacle in racing, the Indianapolis 500. When I first found out that I was a 500 Festival Princess, I was super excited because our application process was extensive and I know a lot of girls worked really hard to get to that point and I was just super excited to meet that group of young women who were academically driven and going to represent their college just like me. For the 500 Festival, I'm so excited for the Indianapolis 500, of course, because that's what it's all about. But I'm also really excited for a thing that we do that's called study trips, where we take groups of fourth graders to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and we teach them about the history of the Indianapolis 500 and about why it's so important to our state and why our state is on the map nationally. You can catch Lexi at all pre-race events, including the race May 29th. With the Franklin Newscast, I'm Eric Mullenix. With all of this talk about Franklin, we can't forget about Frank. Frank Dean is the owner of Frank's Guitars, and like everyone else, has had to adapt to the pandemic. After two pandemic years passing, it seems like Frank is here to stay in Franklin. When COVID-19 hit Franklin, Indiana more than two years ago, Frank's Guitars was one of the first businesses to close their doors, but they were finally able to open their store approximately one month ago. Store owner Frank Dean has seen many businesses come and go in Franklin. So when the global pandemic hit, he took precautions seriously, like going completely online. Well, it's not nearly as much fun. It takes away from the personal thing of it, but you know, it certainly got us through the time where a lot of people didn't make it. One of the biggest challenges for the business was the loss of their in-person sales and teaching program. The biggest loss was in our teaching department because we were up to like 100 students and now we're just starting that back up from about six, you know. As far as inventory, Dean explained that COVID didn't limit their access to guitars as their primary focus is used in vintage gear. With mandates being lifted, Dean is looking forward to the increasing foot traffic and a chance to get back on stage to perform. For the Franklin Newscast, I'm Zane Ballinger. Whether it be for the betterment of their grades, mental health, or another reason, Franklin College students have been working with plants in the greenhouse. Reporter Eric Mullenix takes a look into what students do there and why. Whether it's career progression, therapeutic relief, or simply having a green thumb, Taylor Tatlock and Andrew Deeb express why they like working at the greenhouse. I like coming back in. I see like the dirt under my fingernails, kind of like a sign of a job well done. So it's. I like to say it's like a therapeutic process. Like you can come in here sometimes a day in 30 minutes and you can just work on the plants and not really think about anything else. So it's nice. Obviously, don't want them to die. Uh, water them, prune them. Uh, you know, occasionally they need to be repotted or need no soil or fertilized or you know, sometimes you get like a fungal disease or something that you got to treat them for. So it's basically just playing plant babysitter and sometimes plant doctor. 
I just, I really enjoy it because it's nice coming in here if I'm ever like stressed or just wanna kinda get away from stuff. I like to come in here and just take care of the plants. So like for example with the cacti, we'll take a piece off and then we'll like move it into a different area so that it can grow into a new plant. And so mainly it's just taking care of like, you know, sweeping in here, just make it look nice and making sure that the plants are healthy. With the Franklin Newscast, I'm Eric Bolinex. While some students work with plants, others work creating art. Senior Macy French presented her artwork recently at the Senior Art Show and sat down with reporter Alexis Schrake to talk about it. Senior Macy French presented her graphic design, drawing, painting, and photography work at the Senior Art Show. I mean, that I've done at Franklin, my favorite pieces are the photography ones that I did in Puerto Rico because that was mm -hmm. really cool trip. Um, I do love all my digital design stuff, but I just think the, the pictures are pretty vibrant colors. And it was just mm -hmm. a cool experience and good to look back on. Um, my favorite piece, though, overall is the piece of furniture that I did. Mm -hmm. I painted that two years ago during a summer. Yeah, it was. I was in 4-H all through um, school, so my mom and I redid a lot of furniture. We refinished furniture, so I didn't build it, but I painted it. So then I took the painting class here with David, and he um, kind of gave me some tips and tricks and put that to work. French was able to go to Puerto Rico during the 2022 J2 mm -hmm. semester. She said she recommends the experience to anyone able to travel. It was really cool, new experience. She said she is starting to prefer her photography work over graphic design. She is currently an intern at American Structure Point and Rough Press Plus, where she hopes to land a job after graduation. Her work can be seen in the atrium of JCFA. For the Franklin Newscast, I'm Alexa Shrake. That wraps up tonight's show, but we'll be back. Join us next time. I'm Benny Patterson. And I'm Zach Roberts. Good night, Grizzlies.